Welcome to Worth Mending. I'm Alicia, and as you may have guessed, I'm going to be darning a pair of socks today. If you've been around the channel before, or maybe around my other social media pages, you will almost certainly have met these gray socks. They're just a delightful pair of handmade socks that somebody made for me, and I've been patching them for the last couple of years mostly on the ball of the foot here, on both pairs. Today I'm going to be mending this hole here that just popped up in the heel of the sock. And I'm going to be doing that using my Swift Darning Loom, which is the same method that I use to do all of these patches here. You can see that they've been pretty well worn and washed. The patches are starting to felt a little bit and that's normal, they're holding up great though. The rest of the sock is made with a sock yarn, which is mostly wool, but with nylon to reinforce it. And the wool that I'm using to patch is actually 100% wool. So it seems to be wearing a little bit differently, but it's all holding up well. Let's turn this camera around and I'll show you what I'm working on. Get started with just the loom itself so I will unpack it for you this is the full bundle so it's got a bunch of other tools in it so this is my this is my darning loom I've also got this extended work surface that I'm not going to be using and oh a bunch of needles and other stuff we're gonna use this we're going to use our weft pick. Probably going to need these scissors and we'll keep these needles handy. So I'll just clear this out of the way. So my Swift darning loom here is designed after the vintage speed weave model. So if you have a loom that is kind of like this, but looks slightly different, this tutorial will still work for you. I'm going to put my work surface inside of the sock here. You can really see the hole that you need to patch when it's backed with the wood like this. This heel is a little bit of a tricky spot and you can see that it's wearing around the hole quite a bit as well. But I'm just going to do my best to stretch the sock around this work surface so that the hole lines up with the top where those hooks are going to be. Typically I use this t-shirt yarn here to attach the loom to my work surface, but since this is a little bit trickier, I'm going to start by putting an elastic band around the outside like this just to keep this part in place. Then bring the loom in. Great. And then I can put the t-shirt yarn around the outside like this. I don't always use that elastic band. Typically the t-shirt yarn is enough, but this one is a little bit of a tricky spot and I just wanna make sure that everything stays in the right place. I've got it lined up now so that the top of the hole is lined up with the bottom of the hooks. It's lined up with the hooks on this side and I've got some nice intact fabric all the way around on all of the edges. So I'm just going to thread the needle and get started. I'm sticking with the green and orange theme here, but I don't quite have that same green and orange. This is just two plies of this twisted yarn. I typically try to go for things that are like a sock weight, but if something is slightly too thin or too thick, I try to make it work as well. So I've got my yarn threaded. There's no knots in it or anything. Alrighty. My table is wobbly. Don't want that. So. so I'm starting off with my warp threads that are going to be going vertically like this. Typically, I will choose a hook and kind of trace straight down from there into some intact fabric. I put the needle in a little distance away from where I need to come up so that I can just leave a long tail on the other side. Come up there just below this hook, around the hook, 
And then I make just a little stitch at the bottom. And I'm going to be working my way across in this direction. So I grab another hook around the hook, take a little stitch at the bottom. And we're doing this all the way across. I like to make sure that these are not too tight. They do tighten up a little bit as we weave, so we have to keep those warp threads kind of loose. Typically I like to try and roughly measure out the length of thread that I'm going to need because I hate weaving in ends later, but I was just working with a piece that I had left over from a different project, possibly even this very patch, so I'll just, I'll just have to do another one right at the end here. To measure the length of yarn that I need, I start by just leaving this little tail here, loop around the hook, and it's this measurement that I'm going to need to work with. So I need to do two more hooks, I'm going to double this, and then leave a little bit extra for a tail. So this here is going to be enough yarn to finish my project. As I was saying, with this yarn in particular, I'm choosing to split the plies and just use two ply instead of four ply. Not all yarn stands up to having the plies split like that, so you'll just have to be careful and see what your particular material that you're working with is like. Instead of struggling my way through threading the needle, this time I'm going to use this folded piece of paper. So I just place the yarn inside like this, and then I hold this piece of paper with the folded edge down, and I can thread that through. So once again, I've got my yarn here, there's no knots in it. So my patch is going to be working straight up both of these edges. I just get started in the same way by inserting the needle a little bit away from where I want to bring it up, and then come up right at the corner here. Super long thread at the beginning, so you have to pull for quite a bit, but it's worth it again because I don't love weaving in excessive ends. <laughs> So I always like to point the hooks in the direction that I'm going. It doesn't make a difference. It's just my choice. And then I use the eye of the needle first and I just pass it through each of these hooks like this. And then on the other side here, I just make a little stitch on the side. And then I work my way back in the other direction. Flip the hooks using the eye of the needle first. Sometimes I like to pull down like this just to make sure I'm not splitting the thread as I work my way across. Other times I'm more confident, but for now, we're just looping one at a time. Then we can pull down like this. I like working with a long needle like this because it lets me push down on my previous row and get a nice tight even weave. I'll just do a couple rows quickly here and then I'll show you what that little comb beside me is for. Every so often I like to come in with my weft pick and just make my weave even tighter. As I'm weaving along, I just keep squishing all of the previous rows down, either with the needle or with my weft pick like this and it really makes a lot more room to add some more rows in. I'm going to keep working until I'm as close to the hooks as I can get. 
This fuzzy yarn that I'm using here has more of a tendency to split as I'm moving across the hooks than something like a cotton that's a little more smooth and slippery. So I just try to be careful not to split those threads as I'm working across. That's one reason I really like using the eye end of the needle first. It makes it less likely to split those threads. Up near the top here, I tend to come in even more frequently with that weft pick. I really try to squeeze in as many of these rows as possible so that I get a nice tight weave. I find that that lasts longer than something that has what I like to say a lower thread count. I think I can sneak one more in here. <laughs> these hooks seem to say otherwise though. They don't want to lay in that other direction anymore. Now is where I can take my work off of my loom. So I just remove my t-shirt yarn here. And what I like to do is just flip the loom down on top of my patch and kind of wiggle backwards, we're off. So now we're left with what's effectively a pocket here. So I need to secure these loops down to my sock. I left this last row loose, I didn't stitch it down. So I'm gonna stitch it down right now. And then I'm gonna come up just at the top of that loop. This is just a small detail here, but to make it less visible, um, once this is finished, I like to come in from the back. And that way the pattern blends in with the rest of the weave. And so I do. When I take another little stitch, come into the back of my next loop like this and just work my way across exactly like this. Sometimes I feel extra confident and I'll do more than one loop at a time. Today though, we're taking it slow. I'm even gonna go in with the eye of the needle so that I don't split that loop. I'm just gonna pull this thread, pull this thread tight as I'm working here so that it lays flat and you can see it blends right in with the rest of the weaving. Right at the end, I just sink my needle down at the end of this row and come up just a little ways away so that, again, I can leave a longer tail for weaving in. We're almost done. I'm just gonna remove my work surface and let's flip this sock inside out. On the inside, you can see where I left a longer tail. So I just pull on those loops to bring all of my loose ends to the inside. And then I can just stitch them in. This is where a shorter and maybe even a dull needle will come in handy. I just go in and find a place to stitch this tail through. So here I'm just going to go through these other green loops. I know it's probably impossible to see. And then end in between my sock and my patch like this. And that'll do. We just repeat that for the rest of the tails.
I'm choosing not to make a knot in this case because I know it's going to felt on its own a little bit and kind of hold everything in place with friction and I want to keep it as smooth as possible on the bottom of the foot here so that we don't feel it. So I'm going to continue, I'm going to continue with all of those ends just like that. Those are all of my ends woven in. I'm going to cut them shorter because they don't need to be this long. You can see my old ends are still there and they're felted in place. They're not going anywhere. And there you have it. That's another patch on this very well-loved little pair of wool socks. Something I really love about mending is how it customizes and adds to the story of each of my garments. So I'm not sad at all that these keep wearing. I am excited to keep making them art. If you're interested in that kind of thing and you watched to the end of this video, so you very well might be, please follow along as the story of these socks continues to evolve and you'll see a lot of my other mending and art projects. So thank you so much for being here. Have a great one.